Let's open our Bibles to the little book of 1 John again. Chapter 5. Yes, class, we're in chapter 5 now, the last chapter of the book. And uh, we're going to focus on verse 4, followed by verse 5 uh, in our Bible study this evening. This is a majestic portion of Scripture. Uh, some fundamental New Testament truths about living for Jesus are going to be proclaimed. Let me read you those two verses. 1 John 5, 4 and 5. For whatsoever is born of God, that's B-O-R-N, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. That is a simple statement of fact. If someone has been born again, they are overcomers as far as the world is concerned. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Even our faith faith. And then John immediately continues writing, verse 5, who is he that overcometh the world? I know a lot of Baptists who are not overcoming the world. I'm sure that's true of other religious denominations or groups. Who is he that overcometh the world. And, and ladies, that can as easily be, who is she that overcometh the world? Here's the answer. He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Class, watch this. John is building in these two verses a beautiful, logical, verbal argument. The first line, whatsoever is born of God. Our paragraph begins with being born of God. Janao, the verb there for born, G-E-N-N-A-O, means uh, generated birthed, fathered, whatsoever is born of God. That's how he begins the verse 4 to 5 paragraph. Now watch how he ends the paragraph end of verse 5. He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. He buttresses the middle of our section of Scripture our text for tonight, born of God, believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Two statements of faith or two statements of fact that will get you to heaven when you die. Born of God, born again, believing that Jesus, not just is the Christ, he is, is the Son of God. Those are it's like John is building a delicious sandwich for us to spiritually enjoy. Those are the two pieces of bread. Born of God, believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Now look at the meat. Delicious, nutritious, strengthening meat in the middle. Overcometh the world. Overcometh the world overcometh the world. And right in the middle of it, maybe like the mayonnaise or the mustard, your faith. Your faith. Oh boy, that'll season it. That'll make it all the more tasty. This is what John is saying. If you are saved, 
if you have been born again, born of God, if you sincerely believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you're on your way to glory. You're a new creature. You will automatically, by virtue of something that happened when you got saved, you will automatically be, listen to this, an overcomer. You will, by virtue of God's power, overcome the world. Experience victory over the world. And how am I going to do that? Even our faith. Even our faith will bring us that victory. You know what John is implying here? Class, forgive me. He's not implying it. He's saying it. The moment you were born again, God put in you the spirit of an overcomer. I think I can word that better. God put in you the overcoming Holy Ghost. How many of you believe that? The instant you got saved, God placed the Holy Spirit in you. The Holy Spirit abides in you right now. Paul told the Corinthians, the Holy Spirit has moved in and turned our bodies into a temple. Our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. And along with that Holy Spirit, please, please let me hear an amen. There comes the power. That's the word. There comes the power. I'm thinking of the Greek word dunamis. There, it, it comes into English as there comes the dynamite power to overcome the world, to be victorious over the world. And we're going to talk about each of these words in class tonight. I can prove to you unquestionably that the moment you got saved, God poured his love into you. <clears throat> Excuse me, class. <clears throat> Romans <clears throat> chapter 5, verse number 5. When God justified me, he, he allowed the Holy Ghost to pour out, to pour forth the King James, to shed abroad in our hearts the love of God. If you're saved, you've got the love of God in you. If you're saved, you're aware how much he loved you. He sent his son to die for you. And you're aware that reciprocally you're loving him with all your heart. And by the way, because I love him and he loves me, I will love his other children. We've studied that. I'm just saying that the same way God poured love into our hearts, we're loving him. God poured power and strength into our hearts and we are overcomers. We are victorious over the world. Whatsoever is born of God. Several things I need to show you in that clause. Whatsoever, I checked. It's P-A-S, P-A-S. Uh, it, 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 is a, it, it is a word that means all or every, but here, for some reason, it is in the neuter gender. I think, meaning this, whatever soul is saved, Whatever soul is born of God. We are men, we are women, we're male, we're female, of course. God created us that way. But now I think he's talking about our individual souls whatsoever. My soul got saved, my soul got born again, is born of God. Genao, the verb born, generated, parented, fathered, uh, born of God. It is a perfect tense, perfect tense verb. It's a perfect participle. In fact, it is a perfect passive participle. What does all that mean, preacher? It means when God generated you. Listen, class, when God saved you, perfect tense. It happened in the past. It happened the day you bowed your knee, closed your eyes, and begged Jesus to save you. Perfect tense. But though it is a, an occurrence in the past, the power of being saved, the power of being generated goes on and on 
and on. And I am enjoying being saved today as much as the day I first got saved. Something that happened in the past and it's going on and on and on and on and on in its enjoyment and its influence and its power. Hallelujah to God. I have been born of God many years ago now, but I'm still born of God. Perfect tense. Passive voice. I didn't save myself. I didn't put myself in God's family. It was done to me. It was done for me. God saved me the moment I believed in his darling son, Jesus. Wow. Wow. Whatsoever is born of God, if you got it down that you're saved, we can go further here, overcometh the world. That is a present tense verb. It is habit with him. It happens day after day after day. It has become his lifestyle. He is constantly overcoming the world. Preacher, what does that mean, overcoming the world? Uh, the verb is the verb is N-I-K-A-O, Nikeo. What does it mean? Well, obviously it means to overcome, to conquer, to defeat, to surmount in power, not to yield to the world's influence, for me to change the world, not for the world to change me. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Cosmos, K-O-S-M-O-S, -O -O cosmos, that little noun for the world. There are two views of cosmos I want to present to you rather quickly. Number one, the, the root behind the noun cosmos, comedzo. Comedzo. It means to care for, to tenderly nourish and nurture, to love, to dote upon. God so loved the world. Don't you tell me God does not love the world in the sense of its citizens, its inhabitants. I need an amen. That's why Jesus came. That's why Jesus died to seek and to save the people of this world who are lost. I know of two times Jesus is called the Savior of the world. Wow. The world. Here is the second emphasis behind that vocabulary word cosmos. The ladies that fix hair, you, you go up to, what do we say, uh, the beauty shop. Uh, uh, these ladies are, uh, they study cosmetology. It is a word that means to put things in order, to arrange things, everything neat in its proper place. And that's the world cosmos, the way the devil has ordered it. The devil's got this world. He took this world to the beauty shop. He's got it all fixed up, arranged just like he wants it. The Bible says the devil's the prince of the power of the air. Uh, he is the God of this age. Uh, he is he is, uh, he is the God of this world, and he's blinded the minds of his subjects. The world, Jesus loved and died for it. The world, the devil's got it just about like he, especially in these days at the end of our age. But I don't have to yield to that world. I don't have to give in to their lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Get me an amen. I can come out from among them and be ye separate. I can touch not the unclean thing. I can refuse to be unequally yoked together with this world. Why? Because when God birthed me into his family, he gave me the Holy Ghost, the overcomer. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Well now, preacher, how do I overcome the world? Verse 4 continues. This is the victory that overcometh the world. That word victory, the noun 
Nike. N-I-K-E. I'll get this. To overcome the verb to conquer Nikeo. N-I-K-A-O. But the word victory, same stem. N-I-K-E. Nike. That's the name of the Greek goddess for victory, for overcoming in war and in battle. And we are spiritually at war with this world system. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Tell me, John, tell me. Even our faith. Even our faith. Faith, the little noun there is pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. Oh, class, I have to show you something. John has now, and it's been very gradual, transitioned from talking about love. I honestly thought he was going to go on and on and on about love, and I need it in my life, love and wonder. He's transitioned from love now to faith, to belief. This is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. It is related to the verb pistuo, which means to believe. And faith is that, that innermost desire that places my trust and my reliance in my Savior. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even, even our, he's including himself, even our faith. Okay, preacher, what is our faith? Listen to this. Jesus said it. I have overcome the world. Now, the Lord said that. I, you say, no, he didn't. They crucified him. Yeah, but he was risen. He, he was raised from the grave. He overcame the world. I have overcome the world. Now, here's my faith. I'm a Christian. I'm in Christ Jesus. The Holy Ghost that motivated Jesus is the Holy Ghost who motivates me. So because Jesus was an overcomer, here's my faith, I can be an overcomer. Here's another way that my faith overcomes the world. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. The more I study that book, the more I ingest that book, the more I memorize that book, the more I obey that book, the more I meditate on that book, the more I obsess over that book, the more I spend time day and night when I'm traveling, when I'm sitting, when I'm laying in my bed, in that, when I'm meditating on it at midnight in the night. What the, the more my faith grows, and the more my faith grows, this book will pin the world to the wall. It'll tell me this world is lost. This world is going to hell. This world's going to pass away. And it'll tell me that the will of God, not the will of the world, must prevail in my life. Even our faith. The more you love Jesus, the better you come in with Jesus, the more you'll overcome the world. The more you're in that book, learn that book. I've gone through the litany of verbs the more you will overcome the world. Verse 5, verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? Can you name for me? Can you identify me? And Nikeo again, uh, that is a present participle. That you say, boy, uh, three weeks and one day ago, I overcame the world. Now, the world defeated me all last week. No, no, no. This is a present participle. Who is he that constantly keeps on day in and day out overcoming the world? That's not to say we might not slip. That's not to say we might not have a weak moment in sin and then have to confess our sins and trust Jesus that he will be faithful and just to forgive us. But the overall tendency, who is he? Who is she that overcometh the world? Who is this person who refuses to act like the world and 
talk like the world and behave like the world and uh, go the places of the world and and uh, enjoy the themes of the, who is it who is who is he that overcometh the world here it is he that believeth he that believeth again that's a present participle I believe yesterday, I'm believing today. It is in my heart, it'll happen. Holy Ghost is inside. I'll believe and believe and believe and believe and believe and believe until the day I step out in glory and then my belief becomes sight. I'll know and I'll know and I'll know. Hallelujah. The things of God. He that believeth that Jesus, that's Jesus who is God come in human flesh. That Jesus that's the Jesus, the angel said, who will save his people from their sins. That Jesus is, is, the verb is imi, E-I-M-I. -I. It is a present tense verb. He is right now the Son of God. And you know what? A thousand years ago, had I been alive, I'd say he is right now the Son of God. Four thousand uh, years ago, uh, 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 he is now the Son of God. Uh, a thousand years from now, he is now. He is the eternally, eternally present, existent. He is the Son of of God. I, I reverse that sometimes. Jesus is the Son of God, and He is also God the Son. He is the Son of God. Now, when John often has been talking about me as a child of God, or you class as a son of God, uh, he uses the word technon. Here with Jesus, huios. H-U-I-O-S, huios. That's a higher level of son. Jesus is the son of God. I am a son of God. I've been born again and put into the family. Jesus is the sinless son of God. I am a sinner now saved by grace. I have the righteousness of Jesus because of justification. But oh, the mess I bet Jesus never sinned. He is huios. He is the son of God. The word huios, I copied this out of a lexicon. It gives prominence to the inward, ethical, legal aspects of, of sonship and parentage. Jesus, I'm just going to say it, is God's favorite son. Jesus is God's son in whom he is well pleased. Oh, wow. That's the one who will overcome the world. He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Boy, that'll sure change your mind about wanting to watch some old filthy movie the world's got. That'll sure change your mind about wanting to adopt the vocabulary of the world. That'll sure change your mind about wanting to uh, pick up the priorities and the value systems of the world. If you're born of God, you'll overcome all that worldly mess. Who is it that'll do that? The man that is right now believing that Jesus is not going to be or not used to be is the darling, darling Son of God. I go back to my initial statement. The same God who put His love in me when He saved me so I could love those who were born of God, my brothers and sisters, that is the same God who put his power in me the moment he saved me. Power to whip, to defeat, to overcome the world. He even gave me the armor to wear. Ephesians 6, to overcome the world. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, let me paraphrase. Let me par Let me look at my 23, 24 minutes into our class. God said, the same Holy Ghost is in you. Class, that's every one of you. The same Holy Ghost is in you that was in Jesus. And the power of the Holy Ghost broke Jesus out of the grave after three days. That took a lot of power. Bring a man back to life. A man that, that, that the devil would have kept in the grave for eternity. You good and well know the power of the Holy Ghost that broke Jesus out of the grave. Paul said that's the same power and that's the same Holy Ghost that's living in you and that's enough power to quit that little sinful habit you got. That's enough power not to want the things of the world. That's enough power to overcome, to conquer. 
this world. Wow. Amazing. I think Paul uses this term in Ephesians 6. I mentioned that chapter a moment ago. The shield of faith. Have you got your shield of faith in front of you today? Faith in the Word of God, faith in Jesus, and faith in Jesus and faith in the Word of God will produce faithfulness in me. Have I got that shield of faith? And the shield of faith with which I can quench all the fiery darts of the devil. And the devil is the God of this world to him that overcometh. Did you know if you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, you can say, not by your own ability, glory to God, I'm an overcomer. I'm victorious. Paul said we can be overcomers through Christ, our precious Savior. You have overcome the world. Jesus in the book of Revelation, you know this, had John write down seven little postcards, little letters from Jesus, the Lord of life, to seven churches in Asia, called Asia Minor in those days, beginning at Ephesus, ending at Laodicea. I went back and jotted this down, class. Listen to the church at Ephesus. Boy, Jesus, he, he cannot, he really, really treasures this idea of being an overcomer. To the church at Ephesus, to him that overcometh, I'll give to eat of the hidden manna, and I'll give him a white stone. Every bit of this ought to be explained, and I don't have time. A black stone meant you're guilty, you'll be killed. A white stone meant you're acquitted. Hallelujah, you can go home free. I'll give him a white stone. And in that stone, a new name written. I'll give him a new name. I got a new name in Jesus. To him that overcometh. Listen to Thyatira. To him that overcometh, I'll give power over all nations. That's probably during the millennium. He'll rule them with a rod of iron. And I'll give him the morning star. Overcomers. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Sardis, church at Sardis, to him that overcometh, I'll clothe him with white raiment. I'll clothe him with, and I'll confess his name before my Father and his angels. Philadelphia, given to earthquakes. That whole city destroyed again and again by earthquakes. To him, Philadelphia, the church, to him that overcometh, I'll make him a pillar. The earthquake won't shake him. In the temple of my God, he'll know he'll go no more in and out where earthquakes. You're running out of your house, you can go back in. It's safe. You run out. He'll no more run in and out. I'll write on him the name of my God. The name of my God. Even Laodicea. I don't know if I read them all. Even Laodicea. Laodicea. Jesus knocking to get into to him that overcometh. I'll grant him to sit with me in my throne even as I overcame and am set down with my father on his throne. The power, the thrill of being an overcomer for Jesus' sake. And I remind you, if you've been born of God, it ought to be, it ought to be it, it, it is absolutely, you are an overcomer of this world. And who is that overcomer? The man that believes Jesus is the Son of God. And how does he overcome? By our faith. By our faith. We ought to close right now and pray, God, make us overcomers. Make us overcomers. Earlier in 1 John, 1 John 2.14, Listen to John. I write unto you, young men. Remember, we had that lesson on stages of spiritual growth. I write unto you, young men, because you're strong. Young men, robust in the faith. And the word of God abides in you. 
and ye have overcome. Ye have overcome the wicked one. John says, if you've been saved, we're all overcomers of the world. John's making us all into stout, robust, not weaklings, not doubters, uh, warriors in the faith for the glory of an almighty God. And, and notice, notice whatsoever, whosoever, John is not singling out an elite group. If you have been washed in the blood, you are an overcomer as Jesus was and is an overcomer. Oh, well, I have time. Maybe I can squeeze this in. You, class member, and Jesus. Brother Bagel, you saved? I sure am saved. You and Jesus. Listen to this. All in First John, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. If we walk in the light as he is in the light. First John 2, 6. He that saith he abides in the Lord Jesus ought to walk even as Jesus walked. I'm in the light whew, as he is. I ought to walk even as he walked. And then First John 4, 17. Just had it a few lessons ago. Herein is our love made mature. Herein is our love made uh, grow, perfect that we may have boldness in the day of Je Oh, I enjoyed that class because as he is, so are we in this world. Did you hear that? As he is, he's victorious. So are we in this world. We are, that's faith. We are in Christ Jesus. Walk in the light as he is in the light. I can walk, study, obey, live even as he walked. And because as he is, so are we in this world. Hallelujah. We are overcomers. Here's faith. How can you overcome the world even by our faith? Here's faith. The verses, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Paul said, if you're saved, class, get this. It's life changing. If you're saved. God has already raised you up together and he has made us all to sit right now in heavenly places in Christ. You know why I overcome the world? I'm not a citizen of this world. I, I'm a stranger. I'm a pilgrim. I'm just passing through. I don't belong here. I'm already seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord. The emphasis has certainly shifted to belief and to faith here now in 1 John. Uh, here's a statistic. Let me share it to, with you. John uses the verb to believe very often in all of his writings, but we're talking 1 John. John uses the word believe 10 times in 1 John. Ten times in these five little chapters. That is a lot of emphasis on belief. But he uses the noun for belief. The noun that is tra pistis, translated faith only one time. And it's right here in our text. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Quickly, let me add this. How do I overcome the world? And I've already said Jesus, faith, word of God, by not loving it. Love not the world. Don't love the world or anything in it. By doing the will of God. Not the will of the world. Doing the will of God. And as I've said, by being in the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin, that I might not go to the way of the world, that I might not sin against thee. Closing. Got to close. Time's, uh, yeah. D.L. Moody said it. D.L. Moody said it. Uh, this is astounding. 
Don't cut it. Don't, 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 don't stop me now. But follow through. I get drunk every time I want to. Bill Moody said it. I go to a wild party every time I want to. I go out and have a fling in the world every time I want to. Then he said, but since I've been saved, I no longer want to. I get drunk every time I want to. But since I've been saved, I no longer want to. Who is he that overcometh the world? The man or the woman who believes Jesus is the Son of God who has been saved by God's astounding, amazing grace. May I read the text one more time. Oh, God, let it get a hold of our hearts. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. And who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Something that worries me. We're living in the most worldly age in our churches that I have ever seen. That's worrisome because I just read, if you're really saved, you will overcome the world. Lord, make us greater overcomers. Strengthen us and then may we obey the Holy Ghost who will not lead us into the world, but will lead us into the will of God. In Jesus' name I pray and ask it. Amen. Class, meet us again. Every other night we study, we'll go on into verse 6 and 7, the rest of the way into chapter 5.